Thanks for singing. Hi friends, welcome to week five of Summer Bible Club. Thank you so much for journeying with us these past several weeks. We're really excited that we've been able to spend some time together through our videos and our Zoom meetings. We really hope you have fun. Anybody who now has the Lord's Prayer memorized, I hope that all of the things that we've learned and understanding more about the Lord's Prayer and what those words mean will help you participate more fully in that prayer when we come to that time of our worship service. So as we head into our last week, there's a couple things that I want to remind you of. The first is our mission project. If you have not had a chance to donate canned food yet for the Kingdom Celebration Center, you can still drop off donations on the picnic tables outside the church. And though that has been our specific project for Summer Bible Club this summer, that's something that the church, Ark and Dove, is still working on even after Summer Bible Club is over. So that can be one way that you continue to practice some of these lessons we've learned from Summer Bible Club. Also, if you have any pictures that you would like to share of the things that you've been doing, we'd love to see those. Uh, we can share them on Sunday morning in the announcements or in our final newsletter. So send them my way. All right. Um, before we begin, I'd like to open us up with a word of prayer. Glorious God. Thank you for the amazing community you have created among us over the past four or five weeks. Thanks for the friends we have made, the fun we have had, and the things we have learned. Lead us into this last week of learning and growing in you. Amen. All right. Well, our prayer for this week is, or the part of the prayer for this week, is the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To this week, we're learning about peace and peacemaking and how all of these goals build peace in God's world. So we're really excited for you to journey with us, and we'll start out with a song. Whisper a prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon, whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. God keeps your heart in tune. God keeps your heart in tune. Hello and welcome back to the last week of Summer Bible Camp. It's been so much fun playing and learning with you. Have you had fun, Sage? I have. I can't believe it's Amen Week already. Amen Week? Yeah, Amen Week. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And it's over. <laughs> oh, you mean like Amen Week, like the last week. Yeah, that's what Amen means, doesn't it? It's a churchy way of saying the end. Well, we do end prayers with amen, but it's not because it's the end. Amen means, yes, it is going to come about just like this. We say amen because we're finishing our prayer knowing that God hears our prayers. So amen is like the beginning and the end? Actually, I never thought about it that way, but you're right. When we say amen, what we're saying is, we know God will do what God will do. <laughs> That's cool, but we've prayed about some big things these weeks, like ending hunger, and making sure people are healthy, and making new friends. Uh, I still have a lot of learning left to do, but sometimes I have trouble keeping peace with my brothers. Like, so how can we say amen when things we've prayed about are so big and far away? When the things we're praying for are big and far away is the exact right time to say amen. Because what we're saying is, 
even though we don't know how God will do these things, God does. So we say, amen, trusting that as the prayer said, the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We can trust that God has a plan and that we are part of it. We can try something because we know God is in control and God will make it turn out as he's planned. This might just be in God's time, not ours. I like that. That makes me feel hopeful. Like I can go out and really make a difference in the world. I'm glad it makes you feel that way, Sage, because you can make a difference. All of us can. God created us that way, each of us different, because each of us brings different gifts to the world. We just have to work together and trust God. It's a big job, but we know that because it's God's work, we can have confidence in our part in it, now and forever. Now that deserves an amen. 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 Welcome, friends, to Bible Time in Week 5 of Summer Bible Club. I hope you've enjoyed these videos, learned a bit about the Lord's Prayer, and about how to be a follower of Jesus in this world. What does this symbol mean? What does it mean? It means peace. What does peace mean to you? For some people, uh, peace is what it means to feel safe, that nothing is going to hurt or, or harm them. They can feel at peace, safe. For others, peace means that people are no longer arguing or, or at odds with each other. And so peace it means that uh, there is unity or, or togetherness, that people are in agreement with one another and working for some good in the world. And for some, a peace is that sense of calm you get when you're not worried, when you're not scared. You know, Jesus told his disciples, Peace be with you. And his disciples were at times uh, afraid and worried. His disciples sometimes fought with one another. They weren't unified or together. And his disciples were also fearing for their safety. They were worried they were going to be harmed or hurt. And so Jesus came to them, saying, Peace be with you. Listen to this story. It comes after Jesus died and was raised again. From Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. While the disciples were talking about some things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and look at my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of boiled fish. 
and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Peace be with you, Jesus says to his frightened disciples. You know, sometimes when people are, are frightened or they're afraid for uh, their, their safety, they get tense. You know, when your shoulders go up and uh, you get a little bit stiff. And when Jesus says, peace be with you, I can imagine them relaxing feeling calmness. What does the world like when everybody has this peace that Jesus proclaims and offers to us? Way before Jesus, there was a man named Isaiah who said that peace in the world looks like this. It looks like a wolf and a lamb living together the predator, and the prey, side by side. It looks like a calf and a lion living right together. It looks like a a cow and a mighty bear grazing together. It means that enemies or even Things that would bring harm to others are together, live together. What does peace look like for our world? Maybe it's no more fighting. Or maybe when when we get so angry and we have these clenched fists, that our fists open and we can give high fives. Peace might look like bullies befriending those they once bullied. They become friends. Peace is a sense of calm. When you smile to a neighbor, when you're not worried about what will happen next. Jesus comes to us today And says, peace be with you. He also says that we should go out and proclaim and tell others, peace be with you. Which means that we have to make peace wherever we are. In our homes, in our neighborhoods, whether we're online or whether we're driving in a car or at a store. We ought to make peace wherever we are. I don't know if you feel a little bit anxious or worried today, but one of the things that helps me when I feel uh, a little bit uneasy, when I don't feel any peace, one of the things that I do is to pray. In these weeks of Summer Bible Club, we've been learning the Lord's Prayer. And for me, The Lord's Prayer gives me so much peace. I hope that you learn it, that you memorize it, and whenever you feel anxious or afraid, that you can pray this prayer. And I hope that it will give you peace. Let us pray it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Peace be with you. opening session. Don't forget though, we're not quite done with Summer Bible Club yet. Join us on Thursday night for your small group meetings. Get logged in. We'll see you there at 6.30. And I, since it is our last time meeting on our videos, I just wanted to wrap us up with a special sending prayer. Please join me in prayer. God, we thank you for all that we have learned in these past five weeks. And as the end of the Lord's Prayer reminds us that whatever we pray for, we can trust that, God, you love us, that, God, you are always with us, and that everything and everyone in this world belongs to you. We thank you for the time that we've had together for our leaders who have sang with us and read to us and laughed with us and played games. And we ask that you would continue to help grow our community and grow our love for our community, uh, even after Summer Bible Club is over. Amen. All right, friends, we'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, we're going to just say goodbye with a really short little closing piece of music, and I hope you'll sing along with me. We're going to sing it twice, so here we go.